Okay, for this video, I wanted to cover the IRS Form 2439. Uh, these are issued by REITs or RICs uh, to represent undistributed long-term capital gains uh, that are still included in income and subject to tax by the shareholders. So I've got one slide in front of us here that covers some of the rules, and then we've got a sample uh, 2439 and then a tax return for an individual uh, where we'll show how it's being reported and how you get credit for the tax. So what is this? So the, the 2439, again, it's, it means that you were invested in uh, either a REIT or a RIC, right? So REITs are real estate investment trusts, RICs are regulated investment companies. And these entity structures uh, have special federal tax uh, classifications. They're structured as corporations, but what they can do is if they distribute enough of their capital during the year, uh, the entity itself isn't actually subject to any federal income tax, right? The shareholders are the ones that are picking up the dividend income and paying tax at that level. Now, to the extent that a REIT or RIC doesn't distribute enough cash uh, to the shareholders, then the corporation is now subject to tax um, on its net undistributed uh, income. Okay, now the 2439 arises because a REIT or RIC can elect to retain uh, its long-term gains within the company rather than distribute uh, the income to the shareholders. And this is often done if the entity needs the cash, right? So if, if we think about it, they, they're selling assets and they have uh, cash proceeds from the sale of the assets, but they don't want to or can't distribute the cash out to the, the shareholders because they need it. Okay, now if the reader Rick elects to do this, the shareholder is going to include its proportionate share of the undistributed gain in its income, and it's going to be allowed to take a tax credit for whatever was paid at the corporate level. So the reader Rick, when it files its 1120, it's going to report the long term capital gain, it's going to pay tax on it, but it's not going to actually distribute anything to the shareholder. Uh, but the shareholder does record their proportionate share of the gain, and they get credit uh, for whatever tax is paid at the entity level. Okay. Now, the, on the 1040, the taxpayer is going to report the income and the amount of tax withheld um, in order to make sure that they're getting credit for whatever was paid at the REIT or the RIC level. So if we look at a 2439 here, a uh, very simple form, looks a lot like a 1099 dividend statement, right? So you'll have the name of the REIT uh, or RIC up here, uh, the shareholder's name and address, and then uh, boxes 1A and 2 are the relevant pieces here. So 1A represents your allocable share of the undistributed long-term gains. So in this case, John Q was allocated 1025 um, and then this is the piece of tax that was paid on those long-term gains that's being allocated to John. So these amounts are gonna be different for every shareholder. This is just John's allocation based on how many uh, shares of the company he has. And then remember, this is undistributed, so John hasn't actually gotten any cash. If he opens his brokerage account, he's not gonna see any kind of long-term gain distribution or cash infusion for this thousand bucks, right? This is being retained by the company. Uh, but John, nevertheless, still has to report this income and he gets a credit for the tax paid. So if we look at the uh, 1040 for John, we start with the Schedule D, right? So on Schedule D, capital gains and losses, uh, if we scroll down here to line 11, this is where you report long-term capital gain distributions or undistributed uh, gain distributions, rather, on Forms 2439. And then there's a few other forms uh, that would apply to this line item as well. In our case, we've got a 2439 form. So there's John's $1,025. Now, where does he report uh, the tax withheld? Well, the tax withheld is reported on Schedule 3. So if we go to John's Schedule 3 here, additional credits and payments, um, we've got you know part one and two broken out between non-refundable and refundable credits. In this case, in part two, line 12A, we have other payments or refundable credits. There's your form 2439, and there's the $216 uh, that John's going to get credit for on the undistributed long-term gains. Okay, so uh, pretty straightforward reporting. Uh, just important to do it. Um, yeah, again, remember this is. This is something that's only going to apply if you're invested in a REIT or a RIC. Um, and again, you shouldn't expect to receive any cash from them. This is almost, in effect, phantom income. Um, so you're going to get um, a 2439 disclosure that's going to show 
your allocation of the income and the credit for the taxes, but you're not actually going to see anything being deposited into your brokerage account. Okay, so that covers it. I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.